In this third part of the lecture, we are going to discuss how to model the network of an airline, including the possibility of adding or removing routes. We will eventually add fleet decisions to this model in a following video. So we'll divide our modeling approach into three steps. We start with a simple model, a point-to-point -point network model with an homogeneous fixed fleet. This will be the basic model for our network and fleet planning uh, model and it will be the content of this video. In a follow-up video, we'll consider the fact that urban spoke carriers facilitate the connection of passengers in their hub airport. Finally, we'll formulate a model that includes fleet decisions in the network model. We will end the second video discussing the simplifications associated with these models. So let's start with a point-to-point -point network. What is the problem that I'm trying to solve there? So I have a set of airports uh, from which I want to operate, and I know the demands in each flight leg between these airports. I have a set of aircraft, and a homogeneous fleet for this case, and these aircraft have specific characteristics, like the number of seats and the speed. What I want to define is which flight legs I will operate, and on these, what is the number of passengers that I'm transporting and what is the frequency that I should... If I want to solve this problem, I need to formulate it in a mathematical way by describing what is the objective function, so our goal, and also the set of constraints that limit my decisions. Depending on the problem that we are trying to solve, multiple objective functions can be considered. For instance, if we want to satisfy the entire demand, maybe we would like to minimize costs. Otherwise, perhaps maximization of the revenues is one option where we try to explore the maximum of the market. Or combining costs and revenues is the best option and we try to maximize profit. That's perhaps the most common to address this uh, type of network models. In terms of constraints, the most common constraints considered are demand verification, in which says that although I make profit from transporting more passengers, I cannot transport more passengers than the demand that I do have for that specific market. Also, in terms of capacity, I need to limit the number of passengers that I want to transport by the seats that I'm offering in each flight leg. And I want to guarantee that no aircraft pop up or disappear in my network, so I need to guarantee the continuity of uh, aircraft flying in my network by forcing that the number of aircraft landing in a given airport is equal to the number of aircraft departing from that same airport. Finally, I want to consider the aircraft productivity. Although theoretically I can use my aircraft 24 hours per day, this is rarely the case. There are many reasons that will limit the usage of the aircraft. For instance, we will lose time with the turnarounds between flights. The aircraft has to stay on the ground for maintenance reasons. And most likely, we are not using our aircraft during the night, in particular if we are operating short or medium haul markets. So, in this strategic problem, it is reasonable to assume that each aircraft can only operate a given number of hours per day, that we call BT or block time. And these are the objective function and the constraints that we'll consider in our first model. To formulate it, we need to have a set of sets, decision variables and parameters. Note that the decision variables refer to the frequency in each flight leg, the ZIJ, and the flow of passengers in each flight leg, the XIJ. In terms of parameters, besides the demand in each flight leg, we do have the number of aircraft, described by AC, and we have the characteristics of uh, uh, the aircraft uh, that includes speed and seat capacity. We have some information about the yield and cask and about the turnaround uh, process. Using this notation, we can then formulate our network model. And this is the mathematical formulation of our problem. We want to maximize profit, that is computed by subtracting the cost of flying with a desired frequency between all airports, and the revenue generated by transporting passengers between those airports. The first set of constraints guarantee that we are not transporting more people between a given airport I and J than the given demand between those uh, same airports. The second set of constraints limit the number of passengers being transported in each flight leg, constraining it to the number of seats per aircraft times the frequency that we decided to offer and times a load factor. 
The load factor is added because in such strategic long-term model, it will be too exaggerated to consider that we will always fly with a full capacity. The third uh, set of constraints guarantee that we have the same amount of departures as landings in all airports of our network. And the last set of constraints are the ones that limit the budget of hours per day that we have to use our fleets in operations. Okay, to better understand our model, let's see how, how we can use it to solve a simple problem. So we do have an airline that operates from three airports. The demand per flight leg and the aircraft characteristics are provided in these tables. I want to solve three problems. The first one is to determine the frequency per flight leg, assuming that we only have two aircraft and uh, expected revenue per RPK of 0.18 uh, euros. Then we want to solve the same problem, but considering that we only have one aircraft in our fleet. And I want to get back then to the case of having two aircraft, but I want to reduce the revenue to 0.15 euro per RPK. Okay, so if I want to solve this problem, I can use the previous model and I'll obtain the following uh, solutions. So for the first case in which we do have two aircraft, we can make a profit of almost 150 uh, euros uh, per week. But we will be using our aircraft only about 75% of the block time that we have available. If we then reduce to one aircraft, then we can see that we are using our air aircraft uh, at the maximum, but we only generate about 100,000 uh, euros per week. We can also see that the route between A1 and A3 will no longer be provided because it's not profit given that we only have one uh, single aircraft. Finally, if we consider the fact that yield will change from 18 cents to 15 cents of uh, an euro, we'll then will stop operating. It's not profit anymore to operate our route. So this is a simple model that we can use to simulate a point-to-point -point network. In the next video, we're going to see how can I do the same for an urban spoke network and how I can add fleet decisions into this model. So I'll see you there.